crocheters and knitters alike love Pinterest. It's this search engine app that has loads and loads of pictures and inspirational images that you can pin to your board, you can organize, you can have multiple different inspiration boards, mood boards, maybe you're looking for your next knitting project, your next crochet project, maybe you're looking for a specific technique to research. Pinterest is a fantastic tool for all of that. And if you're a pattern designer, you know the benefits of having your designs on Pinterest and having people come to you through that search engine because you can curate a board of all of the things you've ever made as a pattern designer, link your beautiful images to your website, whether it's your free blog where you make ad revenue, whether you're linking to your YouTube channel, whether you're linking to your Etsy shop or your Shopify shop or anywhere that you sell your patterns online, your customer then goes from Pinterest, from that beautiful image, and goes over to where you're selling that product or where you're making the ad revenue, and it is a great tool for us. But I'm not here to talk to you about the benefits of Pinterest because that would be boring. I am here to talk to you about the four reasons that I think Pinterest is a poor tool for crocheters and knitters to find their next knitting or crochet project. The first drawback is the lack of accuracy and reliability on Pinterest. You can be scrolling on Pinterest, find a beautiful image, and you go, wow, I would absolutely love to make that. That is exactly what I've been looking for for years. I just didn't know it until this very moment. I want to buy that pattern. I hope I find that pattern. You open up the link and bam, nothing. Sometimes this lack of accuracy isn't even in the website link that you're drawn to. Sometimes the website will have a pattern for you and you go through that pattern step by step. You get the same yarn as the person, you have the same hook, you follow along the instructions and you end up with a product that looks absolutely nothing like that key image you saw on Pinterest. That happens for one of two reasons. First, that key image is not actually the pattern that you're designing or second, that designer or that website has left out a key piece of information that you needed to know before starting that project. A great example of this is color pooling. If you've ever had a self-striping yarn and you've seen those blankets that have the argyle type pattern and you think to yourself, wow, that takes a lot of talent. Well, it does, but it's a technique called color pooling that really is based on the very foundation row and a certain number of color repeats you have to do before you can get that color pool. An example of a misleading pattern or a pattern leaving out a key piece of information comes from an example in 2016 when Lissabug posted to Paradise Knitting on their blog. They shared an image of a color pooling project that was shared to Pinterest. And this user saw this beautiful image of color pooling, the source of which I don't know because they didn't source it in the blog post, the question that they posed on the Knitting Paradise blog in 2016. But basically the user tells this story that they saw this beautiful image, they got the same exact yarn, the same hook, they followed all of the instructions to an absolute T and ended up with something that looked absolutely nothing like the final image. This is more of an unreliability between the communication of the pattern designer and the user, whereas the Pinterest pin itself was not able to give that piece of information about the setup row of color pooling that the user really needed to understand in order to actually create a successful project outcome. So that is an example of unreliability when it comes to pattern designs. Sometimes when you're on Pinterest and you find a pattern you really like, you do have to make sure that the designer, the pattern writer themselves is providing accurate information to you. And sometimes that just goes completely missed on Pinterest because you're not able to recognize who designed that pattern or what sort of patterns they've done before or if the instructions are gonna be accurate. This brings us to our second drawback of using Pinterest to find crochet and knitting patterns. And that drawback is lack of attribution to the original creator or artist of that product or that image. Pinterest often has a lot of images. Sometimes they're repeat images and sometimes those images are stolen from creators and designers and artists without giving them the proper attributions or credits for their work. And this is really detrimental to an artist's career. 
When you design a pattern as a crochet artist and you put that out into the world, you want people to know that you made that, right? You want control over the narrative of this is why I designed a thing. This is what it represents. This is what it means instead of somebody else taking your pictures, your artwork, even sometimes your patterns and marketing at them as their own. Now, there's a difference and I want to make this clear between people who have blogs that conglomerate patterns together and provide proper attributions for each creator they feature and blogs that take images and patterns from creators and artists and don't give them any proper attribution. Okay, there's a difference between those two. The people who are conglomerating and giving proper attributions are of course making a profit from their blog because of ad revenue but in the end they are leading that user back to the original pattern the original designer where they're either selling it where the free pattern is posted and giving the proper credits that way now in this other case where proper attribution is lacking that can be extremely detrimental to a creator's career especially a pattern designer and a knitting designer now copyright laws protect pattern designers from other people stealing their original creations. Now, there's a lot that goes into copywriting. There is a great video by a creator here on YouTube that goes a little bit further into copywriting. I will post their link to their video in the comment section because I think everybody should go and watch it. It is fantastic. I learned a ton of stuff. I can't relay that information to you. It already exists. That creator already put it out there. So I will go ahead and link that down there so you can read it. But when you are not giving proper attributions to the original designer, you could potentially and unforeseeably and mistakenly and, you know, whether it was your intention or not, you could infringe upon copyright law and you could be harming the original designer. If you are creating pins on Pinterest, right, you're gathering images, you are the one creating that pin to then drive traffic to a particular website or maybe a YouTube channel or something of that sort, you have to be giving proper attributions to the original designers of the things that inspired your post if you are not the one who was originally creating that information. When you give proper attributions, which you always should do, you are respecting the time, the creativity, and the effort of the original designer. And when you do that, you are fostering a community of inclusivity and an ethical community that will then further on the creativity that we all want to see in this world. When you don't do that, on the other hand, you are betraying the original artist, whether you do it intentionally or not, and you are stealing their work, which is a big no-no. So remember, proper attribution is essential for creating a thriving and ethical creative environment for pattern designers. We want to do that. Now, let's get into pitfall number three. Three this is the overwhelming quantity of pins and the complete unorganization of Pinterest due to Pinterest's algorithm. So let's unpack what that means. According to a statistics blog, which I have linked in my description, in 2022, Pinterest said that there were 240 billion pins saved on Pinterest. 99% of those pins contained an image. Um, other pins that you may see contain text or things like that, but 99% of all those pins are images. And of Everybody who is on Pinterest, of which there are 433 million users, 70% of those are women who are pinning things to their inspiration. Pinterest users are searching for all kinds of things. The number one thing searched on Pinterest is home decor, DIY, inspiration. We also have things like knitting, crochet, cooking recipes, landscaping. I mean, you name it. Pinterest probably has a category for that, but you have to search for it and you have to actively want to see that stuff come up in your feed, which brings us to the topic of the Pinterest algorithm. If I search for cute summer knitting patterns, my feed on Pinterest, things that I can scroll through, right? Every image that I see 
will not be the images that you see because my feed is curated for the search terms and the things that I have pinned in the past and your feed will be curated towards the things that you have pinned in the past. The things that Pinterest thinks that you want to see, Pinterest will then show you those images of the things that you are most likely to interact with. You will be fatigued with decision making and, and too many stimuli inside of Pinterest to even choose a pattern to begin with, which is why I would recommend sites like Ravelry or Ribbler if you are specifically looking for your next knitting or crocheted project. Now these sites are tailored specifically to crocheters and knitters, spinners and weavers, and whatever skill that you do that's in the fiber craft industry, that is what those platforms are for. So again, that's Ravelry and Ribbler. Ribbler also has sewing patterns. If you're taking a look at what sewing pattern to make next, I highly recommend you check those out before you head over to Pinterest and get completely overwhelmed by lack of filtering, lack of you know, skill level, lack of, lack of any sort of information other than an image, right? Which can be completely overwhelming and honestly devastating to your own journey as a fiber artist. And let me talk about that as the fourth pitfall. Now, the fourth and final drawback of Pinterest that I'm going to touch on is the unrealistic expectations that we set for ourselves after viewing these curated images on Pinterest. As you're probably aware by now, Pinterest is a place for perfectly curated images of very complex or very simple crochet projects that are often staged or photographed professionally. They're the best images of that product in its best light so that you will be intrigued to click on that image, open up that website and start reading that pattern or purchasing that pattern. Now, as somebody who does marketing for their own patterns, I know that I want to intrigue you with that initial image where you go, I would love to make that. Let me go ahead and see what that actually is, right? So this is a curated set of images that can often lead to unrealistic expectations. We all have different skill levels. We all have different abilities and we all have different desires with what we want the outcome of our crochet or knitting projects to be. And that in itself is beautiful, but it leads to this fourth drawback of Pinterest. Novice and intermediate crocheters may feel a little bit intimidated by seeing all of these images curated on Pinterest, but fear not, you should not have to worry about this, okay? There are so many patterns out there for so many different skill levels, no matter what your desire is with crocheting or knitting, I promise you there is a place that you can find either online or in person, a group of people who will encourage you to do your best to work on projects together. These are often called knit alongs or crochet alongs of which Ravelry is a great place to find groups that are doing that. So you can be encouraged alongside other people who are working on the same project as you. Because Pinterest isn't really designed to show the full range of skills and talents and desires and concepts and any sort of expertise or beginner abilities within the crochet and knitting community, I highly recommend you join a separate community like the ones on Ravelry or Ribbler. Ribbler also has a community forum where you can ask questions, you can post pictures, you can ask the designers questions about their projects, and you can save projects to to-do lists and wish lists and things like that, as well as Ravelry has that option. Now, when we acknowledge these limitations of Pinterest, and we understand that everybody has a different type of skill set and we acknowledge the diversity and the culture that can be created through crochet and knitting and we free ourselves from the expectation to design things perfectly then we will come to a place where we can find true joy in the things that we do as crocheters and knitters and creators and pattern designers and lovers of the crafting community and that is the end goal so that wraps it up. In this video, we talked about lack of accuracy in Pinterest pins, lack of proper attribution, the overwhelming amount of pins and just lack of organization and the unrealistic expectations that you could potentially develop when scrolling through a curated platform like Pinterest. 
While I do enjoy the use of Pinterest, I don't think that it's a suitable tool for crocheters and knitters to find their next pattern. That said, I do believe Pinterest is a great tool to find specific information about a technique or a topic that you're looking for, but I would stay away from spending hours and hours doom scrolling on Pinterest and comparing yourself to those types of things online and those images. Now, do you enjoy Pinterest? Is that where you find a lot of inspiration? And did I miss anything in this list? And most importantly, have you had any water today? And if not, you should probably go get a glass, as I am going to do right now, because I am parched. <laughs>